In this lecture, you'll learn about the NetApp ONTAP networking architecture, the cluster management and data networks, and what each of those does. In the diagram here, you can see that I've got controller one on the left and I've got controller two on the right. Okay, so this is not a chassis with two controllers in it. Controller one and controller two separate here. And you can see that each of the controllers is connected to the cluster, the management and the data network. And there's also a high availability connection between those two nodes. So let's go into some more detail about what each of the networks does. First up, we have got the cluster network, also known as the cluster interconnect. Cluster network is used for internal system communications between nodes in the cluster. So the cluster interconnect, it's for node to node internal traffic only. So the kind of traffic that would be, well, for example, when system information changes, this is replicated between all nodes over the cluster network. So if you go and make an administrative change as the administrator on the cluster, that will be replicated to all nodes and they will all know about it. Also, some runtime information about operations that are occurring in the cluster, that will be replicated between the nodes again over the cluster interconnect. Also, if an external client connection, a user comes in to access some data on the cluster, if that incoming connection terminates on node one, for example, that it's going to read or write data which is stored on disks which are owned by node 2, then that data is going to be transferred, fetched over the cluster network. And the cluster network uses IP over Ethernet. Next network we have is the management network. And this is used for administration of the cluster. So that could be SSH, secure shell traffic when using the command line, or HTTPS traffic when using the system manager GUI, or any other GUI that you're using to manage the cluster. So whenever you as an administrator are working, making changes, or setting up the cluster, you're coming in over the management network. And of course, you're because you're doing this from your PC, that's going to be using IP over Ethernet as well, the same as the cluster network. And the last network type we have is the data network. The data network is used for client access to the cluster. So whenever you've got a user on your PC or a server that's using the storage as its storage, that's going to be coming in over the data network. That could be the NAS protocols, SMB or NFS, or a SAN protocol, Fiber Channel, iSCSI, FCOE, or NVMe OF. The physical infrastructure will be Ethernet or Fiber, depending on the client protocol being used. For example, if it's SMB, it's going to be over Ethernet. If it's Fiber Channel, it's going to be over Fiber. Now, while I'm doing this lecture, I'm giving you a high-level overview here because we're in the early architecture section. Don't worry about more complicated things right now like can my interfaces be bonded together or what if i've got two different departments and i want them to come in on separate network connections those are all possible and i'll be covering them in detail when we get to the networking section but for now early in the course we're just doing a high level overview of the networking at this point data protection traffic which is where data is replicated to another separate cluster for backup or disaster recovery also goes over the data network. And if hybrid cloud is being used for storage or data protection, so if you've got a private or a public cloud provider and you're replicating data to and from there, that traffic will also go over the data network. Data protection and hybrid cloud traffic can use the same physical ports as your NAS and SAN clients are using, or you can split that out into separate dedicated physical ports. Okay, next one we have is high availability, and this isn't classed as a network type, but it's still a network connection. All current FAS and AFF models are sold as HA paired controllers in the same chassis. We'll be getting into a lot more detail on that in the next section. There's an HA connection inside the chassis which carries HA keep alives and NVRAM mirroring between those two controllers. 
So if one of the controllers fails, it will stop sending keep alives over the HA connection to the other controller in the chassis. And then that other controller will know that it has to take over the failed controller's storage. We'll talk about NVRAM mirroring again in a different section when we start talking about Waffle. Okay, so the cluster network, one or more 10 gigabit ethernet or faster than that ports, depending on the model of controller you're using, connect to each cluster network switch per node. So we need to have a pair of cluster network switches. So for our example here, you can see we've got controller one and controller two are an HA pair. Controller three and controller four are also an HA pair. I've got a four node cluster here. I've got my cluster interconnect switches and all four nodes need to be connected to both cluster interconnect switches. That's the network that my intranode traffic is gonna be going over. So controller one connects to both the switches, controller two connects to both the switches, so does controller three and controller four. And I also have inter switch links between those two switches as well to make it as reliable as possible. The cluster network is mission critical to the operation of the cluster. So we have two switches there for redundancy, and this is also on a separate private network. You cannot have any other traffic going over those switches. They're dedicated for the cluster interconnect. You must use a supported model of switch for the cluster ne network. You can't just go and buy any other switch off the shelf. So check the documentation for the latest supported switches. I'll talk about what they are right now here. A pair of switches, like I said, must be dedicated for the cluster network use only. You, if there's any spare parts left over there, you can't use them for any other purposes. It's just for this. So first switch that is supported is from NetApp, the NetApp CN1610 switch. That supports up to 12 nodes. It has 16 10 gigabit ethernet ports and four ports are used for the inter switch links. So that's all of your parts used up. The NetApp CN1610 we just covered there does not support faster than 10 gigabit ethernet and it doesn't have enough ports for clusters with more than 12 nodes. So in that case, you can use the Cisco Nexus 3132QV, which supports 40 gigabit ethernet, or the Nexus 3232C, which supports 100 gigabit ethernet. So if you do have the newer models of controller, which are faster ethernet connections, you're gonna be using a Cisco switch, or if you've got more than 12 nodes. Okay, next thing to talk about is two node clusters. So you can see here, I've just got two nodes in my cluster now, and they're both connected to that pair of cluster interconnect switches. Well, when cluster Dontap first came out, customers asked NetApp, hey, why do I have to connect these two controllers to a pair of cluster interconnect switches? That means I have to buy the switches, and it's another thing that can go wrong. Why can't I just connect them directly to each other back to back? And NetApp listened to that and said, yeah, you're right. And so now two node switchless clusters are supported. So you can see in the diagram here, I've got a chassis with two controllers in it, a controller at the top and a controller at the bottom. And if you do have just two nodes in your cluster, you don't need to have those external switches. You can connect the two controllers directly back to back. Now, this is different than the HA connection, which is internal in the chassis. With a switchless two node cluster, you do need to physically cable them together. So it is gonna use parts on the back of your controllers and you do have to cable them. We can also have single node clusters. So ONTAP can be run as a single node cluster for non-mission critical workloads. If you've got a single node cluster, it does not need a cluster network connection. Obviously, there's not another node for it to connect to, and you don't need to put in the cluster interconnect switches. Okay, so that was a cluster network. Next up, we have the management network used for your incoming management connections to the cluster. With the management network, that is needed to make changes to the cluster. But if the management network goes down, it doesn't mean that the cluster is down. Clients can still access their data on the cluster because they're coming in over the data network. So because of that, it is supported that you can just put in a single switch for the management network that is unlike the cluster network and the data network. 
with the management network that uses port E0M for management on each controller. So you can use a single switch for the management network and then if it goes down and you can't make any changes. So because of that, NetApp do recommend that you do put in dual redundant switches. So that's going to use, again, the management port E0M and it's also going to require a spare one gigabit Ethernet or faster port on the back of your controller because it needs two ports now to connect to the two different switches. You don't need faster than one gigabit Ethernet because it's just management traffic. It doesn't take up a lot of bandwidth. For your management network switches, this is different than the cluster network switches where you have to use a supported model of switch and you have to use a supported configuration on there and it can't be used for anything else. With the management network switches, because it's not mission critical to the running of the server, you can really use your choice of switch. NetApp do have a switch which is suitable for this. That is the CN1601. That can again be used for up to 12 node clusters. It's got 16 1 gigabit Ethernet ports. If you have more than 12 nodes or if you want to use a different model of switch, then an entry level switch from Cisco would be suitable. Next up is the data network, and this is where our incoming client connections for our SAN and NAS protocols are coming in. Obviously, you're going to have dual switches for the data network. If you just had one switch and that switch went down, then your clients would not be able to access their data anymore. So you are going to have dual switches, redundancy for your data network. How you're going to provision the ports depends on the client access needs. And I'll be covering all this in a lot more detail as we go through the rest of the course. It is allowed to have shared data and management network switches. So rather than having separate physical switches for the data and the management network, you can use shared switches for that. If you're going to do that, you're going to want the data and the management traffic to be segregated from each other. So you would configure separate VLANs on your switch. If you don't know about VLANs yet, don't worry. I'll be covering that when we get into the networking section. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage, you can download my free How to Build a NetApp Lab for Free ebook. It's got full step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a complete NetApp Lab, and best of all, you can run it all for free on your laptop. And if you want to get my complete NetApp course, which covers everything you need to know about NetApp storage, you can check out the other video that you can see here too. Thanks.